Hi everyone, Bry here from Bry's Creations. Super excited today to show you a new technique I've come up with called basement spacing that will help you do some unique stuff with object placement. And I'm also really excited to show you one of my newest builds that illustrates this. Um, I call it Dali's Exotic Toys and Pets and it was inspired by the work of Salvador Dali. If you haven't seen his work, you should really check him out. He's incredibly surreal. Um, so I realized this lot is a lot to take in. I was doing a lot of stuff here. Um, it all starts with that candle decor object that actually was on, in my funky one build up on the fireplace mantle. I thought, you know, how cool would it be if I could enlarge that and have two archways there um, with a door on inside either one of them. Um, I was also going for, you can see, dead, long, spindly tree branches. The roof is pretty funky. Well, I was going for kind of a melted effect with that. Dali does that a lot. Um, and uh, you can see that back area was a kid's play area with some funky stuff that I'll get into in a little bit. And back to the front of the build. Um, I know it's, it's, it's a lot to take in. <laughs> Let's take a closer look at some of those elements. Um, so there is the tree, um, and I did these custom stepping stones. When I say custom, I just mean that I did it. It's not co custom content. None of this is custom content. It's just objects enlarged and placed using basement spaces, which I'll explain a bit more later. Um, and uh, just kind of giving you a little bit more view of that exterior and that roof. I would have liked to have done a bit more with it, but... I hope it achieves something of the effect. I wanted to go and show you a closer look at this play area in the back for the kids. Since it's a toy and pet store, I did a play area. And the sandbox area in particular, I like. Uh, got a couple of doll heads on those bikes there. Those were in debug. I have no idea what they're for. And this is probably my Dali, most Dali-esque um, portion of the build where I did a skull with the odd plant tentacles coming out of it. It's very much like one of his paintings that I like. Um, and you really kind of have to see it at night. It has a glow to it. Let me clear the screen down there a little bit and there you can see it. So just a couple of fun touches there. Uh, kids probably don't want to come back and play here by themselves. Uh, now let's just start heading into the interior. So this is a combination of a toy store and a pet store. Um, so we can choose which door we want to go through. And I'll take you to the pet store first. I did a cow plant over there and it looks like he's hungry which could be a bad thing for one of our customers but when I play tested this I got a ton of customers so no worries there this is the entry setup um, you'll see that there are sims created artwork throughout this whole build and these are our funky pets we've got some frogs we've got some unidentified stuff in jars and we've got some really wild ones and when I play tested the sims loved these guys and wanted to buy them I set up my own little custom tank, so to speak, there, put some fish in it. They don't move, unfortunately. And this is the little half bath that your customers can go into if they need to. Then if we swing around, the stores are connected, they're open to each other, so we can head into the toy store. I had fun setting up some of the Sims art here, um, a little chemistry area for the kids to concoct danger stuff. That is the scariest toy in the game, in my opinion, the creepiest, that Yama. Um, Lots of dolls for sale. This dollhouse was originally intact and somebody, an unhappy customer, must have kicked it. I was going to repair it, but I actually thought it was kind of cool to leave it that way. And back there you can see we've got actually a secret door to exit the area, which we have on the other side too. And here's the small half bath on this side, again with that Yama, scary Yama. This is the downstairs. This uh, retail build has full living quarters if you want to do your home business. I wanted to, again, um, do an animated fireplace, modern fireplace. I love how these turn out in the living room. And then we've got the kitchen area, kind of a Dolly-esque painting there, I thought. A nice bright, bright pop of color in the kitchen. And then um, we can transition on over to the dining area. A lot of moo to get that table looking very custom. And then over here we've got two bedrooms, each kind of with a theme. This one I kind of think of as the person who runs the pet store, kind of a scientific, techie, cool, very minimalist 
looking deal. And as you can see, I actually did a little aquarium over here. I love how the, that particular object has the bubbles that go. Put fish in there too. Don't know if you saw them. They don't move, unfortunately. This is the full bath that the two bedrooms share. Pretty simple, kept in neutral colors. Um, had a little fun with Moo in there. And then this is the bedroom I envisioned for the person who crafts the toys and sculptures. A little bit eccentric. Um, he's got space to do his work. And then I liked my little funky skulls over the top of the bed. And that and and Yan. That is actually a picture of CC art, not, not custom content itself though. So that was the interior. And then I'm just popping to show you um, the overhead layout of the um, the two shops. Pretty simple, pretty small, but when I play tested, I got plenty of people. You might actually not want to advertise too much because I got a pile of people in that little store. And then here's the basement level, which is the living level. And you're probably wondering, what is all this stuff all around? Well, this gets to basement spaces, um, which is how I was able to manage to place so many of the objects. Um, it Basically, you can put objects down in basements at either level and depending on how you choose to size them and height adjust them they can then be displayed above ground um, sims don't have any problems routing through or around them so it's extremely handy to get to be able to do things that you couldn't ordinarily do um, even with move objects on you can't ordinarily position a lot of this stuff this way you can't really embed things in the ground um, and height adjusted stuff outside will drop. So if you're interested in taking a closer look at this build, search for my hashtag Bryce Creations in the gallery. Thanks for watching.